in order to follow this tutorial. You're going to need a couple of things in addition to Bryce. You're going to need a paint package you know how to use. I'm going to use uh, PaintShop Pro version 8 as my favorite. I know how to use this paint package. And also you're going to need the spherical mapper made by Huro and myself in order to uh, to do the final conversions. Well, the aim here is to set up your uh, conversion file. Once you've done this, then you can use it in, in other projects. And to do that, uh, I'm going to create a test image using one of the materials made in another tutorial. So if, you, uh, if you've been following the tutorials, you'll recognize this uh, material. I've got it saved here. I've just wrote in here, but any any material will do really. It's just that it'll make it easier to explain. So this is this rainbow pattern. I want the rainbow to go and do one complete circle. Uh, so that means I'm going to half the frequency here. So I'll just uh, lower that value to half its value. So you can see now it goes to one complete rainbow in half. Uh, I'm going to use ambient to light it up. I'll light it up with ambient there. It's uh, it's already spherically mapped. Uh, for this material, which is how it comes to, uh, to be a complete circle. I use the overhead camera, modify the document setup so I've got a square aspect ratio, and then enlarge this sphere so it occupies most of the scene. It's looking a bit dim at the moment because in the default sky I'm being set to grey, so I'll set that to fully white, turn the atmosphere off and set it to black so that no haze effects are going to interfere with my render, so I get a nice clean render, and I'm going to turn the sun off. Even though I turn the diffuse off, I usually turn the sun off anyway. So there we go, a complete quick render, and that's going to be our test file. So I'm going to save that as uh, test texture. Because what we're looking at here, the end result will be you can take any image from a photograph and produce a spherical map for it that will be more or less seamless. It's not a perfect process. There's some things to consider, but uh, it's 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 an easy process. We'll move on to more advanced uh, ones in a bit, I think. But uh, for this one, we're just setting our stall out and creating the file that's going to allow us to do this. I just launched a fresh instance of Bryce. I'm going to get rid of the ground plane. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with last time, turning the atmosphere off, turning the ambient up to full white, going into the Skylab, and disabling the sun, just setting the stall out again. And then I'm going to bring in the spherical mapper, which I've got saved here, and set it to the world origin, because it has to occupy exactly the same origin as the perspective camera. So switch to overhead view and select my perspective camera and modify its origin to the same as that as the spherical mapper. To get it to work properly, we need to set to 360 degree panoramic projection and also it's set up for a document ratio of 2 to 1. Now I'm just going to leave it at these uh, settings, but uh, if you were capturing uh, texture from a photograph, you'd have to consider how high resolution your photograph was, and you want a high resolution for your texture. But obviously there's no point be going beyond what your photograph uh, consists of when it's been laid out. Bear in mind that it's going to be repeated a few times. So for this job, I'm going to have to create some cubes. I create cubes because they're easier to get hold of than 2D faces. I'll just zoom the camera in a little bit. So here's our perspective camera, there's a spherical map, a lens system in the middle, and here's a cube. So first of all, I'm going to arrange the cubes around this central position um, so that the faces all meet. So edit, I'm going to move it in the X direction while holding the shift key down so it moves in discrete steps and place one just to the right. Then I'll create, oh, that's oh, still not sorted that problem out. I'll create another cube and move it across to the left. I'll create another cube and move it forwards. I'll create another cube and move it backwards. Now these cubes, which I can select all together, I'm going to assign to their own family. I'll choose this one here and call this um, middle. Right, and I also notice in the family there's family 2 which is the lens system so I can identify that while I'm here right, to uh, use family groups to separate objects it makes uh, things easier when your scenes get a bit more complex right I'm going to create another cube now switch to the side view and lift that up to the top and assign that another family so what's this one family 13 I'll call that one and then I'll create another cube and edit that and slide it down to the bottom 
and I'll call that one um, well bottom I suppose there we go so there's our cubes now if I select all these cubes together and then select uh, reposition Y while holding the shift key down I can move them down half their height and that means that their origin all aligns up with the origin of this little setup that I've created so you see the camera fits in there very neatly and we're ready to do our first test I'll go into the material for all these cubes assign to the ambient channel get rid of diffuse turn up the ambient Whoop, don't want specularity and select image texture go into the texture source editor click on an empty square and load in my test texture and we can see how it looks now how close to being seamless it is so I'll switch to the camera view and give it a quick render and we'll have a look so the first thing that you might notice is that some rather unpleasant little lines appearing here along the edge even though these look like they should blend there's a line now the reason for this is we go into materials for the texture and look here where this drop down arrow is picked interpolation blurs the pixels in your image so that they run more smoothly over your texture which is fine except when it re reaches the edge it blurs from one edge to the other so it wraps them around so we don't want that because this edge isn't matching with that edge now if it was a texture that was designed to move, go seamlessly across the surface so it was tileable this wouldn't be a problem but in this case it isn't so we need to turn that off so just uncheck picked interpolation and then if we return to our render you'll see that those lines have now vanished so what we've got um, well this is a mirror which means that a mirror image which means it's going to blend seamlessly except of course for the problems associated with a mirror image like if the lighting was coming from this direction on this one it would conflict on this surface but this is only setting up a basic setup so we'll call that that's blending okay that's blending okay there's problems with the top and bottom because they have colors in them that don't occur at the top and bottom like at the top here we've only got orange to green so we can only have orange to green at the top so any blues and cyans are going to help but we can sort out this middle row these two that's in front and to the right need flipping round so if I select oops I don't want to move that I'll just deselect everything select the cube that's in front and the cube that's to the right and then just holding the shift key down again go to rotate Y axis turn them round twice so I've flipped them 180 degrees now when I render you can see that problem is solved so the middle section all run nicely the top and the bottom need sorting out and to do that I'm going to use PaintShop Pro so I've got PaintShop Pro here I'll find my test file and I'm going to take this segment here and this segment here and use the kaleidoscope function to mirror it round so it occupies the whole area so effects um, and it's in texture of no it's not reflection effects that's it kaleidoscope so here we go uh, the two angles are going to be 45 and 225 this one is going to be the top so I've got two petals so it essentially it means it's placed a mirror I think it, if it's the top one it's here and here at 45 degrees and that's caused it to duplicate that area so file oh just ref uh, accept that file uh, save copy as and I'll call that uh, texture for top all right then I've pressed control Z I can take it back to where I was and then go effects reflection effects uh, kaleidoscope I assume there's similar functions in other um, image processing software but uh, I don't know any other software but uh, otherwise you'd have to work out how you've got to do this in your software but essentially this is how it works in PaintShop Pro 8 so we've got uh, two petals so we don't need any figures in these offsets or anything and, and it's 225 and 45 for the angle so this is going to give me my base I don't need to worry about edge modes because we've got no edges check on that file and save copy of that and uh, I'll also call it bottom and enter bottom right now if I go back to where I was setting things up and remembering I'd assigned the family groups I can go top material select select find the top one there we go check out check out and then go back to family grouping again select bottom material go into text source editor go into the dialog that allows you to find it check 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 and now render okay so getting closer the middles all line up and the bottom lines up but the tops out now it's out by one cube so if we rotate this top by 90 degrees so I'll just uh, take a side view select the top cube 
and then or I could have done it with the family rotate it round 90 degrees while holding the shift key down and using this little tool here switch back to the main view that gives us our seamless spherical map now so just let that render out I know it's not a very interesting uh, interesting map as it happens but we'll come on to that later this is just setting things up so save as and I'll call this uh, texture SM1 right and then I'll open another instance of Bryce and we'll just give it a quick demonstration of this in action and then that's the end of the tutorial because I don't want to go on too long as I often do sorry about that right so I'll create a sphere go into the material for the sphere select diffuse select picture texture source editor and click on an empty slot select that slot be careful when you've opened an empty slot not to click outside here because then Bryce will cover up this dialog and you won't be able to do anything unless you've alt until you alt tab this dialog back to the surface so uh, just a little warning there it will seem like Bryce has crashed but it hasn't it's just that it's covered up the dialog you need to access next so there's our spherical map in there very important step here is to make sure you set the uh, mapping mode to spherical and it's defaults to sinusoidal for some reason so here we go that's our spherical map on a sphere which uh, well it's not very interesting I know so let's try it on a more complicated object just as a final demonstration I'll use this um, ported thing object select my sphere select the ported thing go into the material lab will allow the material to be transferred from the sphere and then I'll just pick my camera up and point it down at that and hopefully you can see that uh, this texture has been applied across this model and you can't see any ugly joins in the material uh, so the next step then will be to uh, to use this to, to create um, a more interesting material than this but the the rainbow one is just a handy one because it shows you where the various bits are fitting together once you've set up your um, map like this then you can cr take a photograph image for example use that plug it into the appropriate parts follow the steps these box don't need to be rotated or, or aligned anymore they're ready to accept the textures you still have to process them in paint shop pro but you know that's the the, the, the price of uh, producing this um, following this method I can't, I can't think of a better way of putting it okay then that's the end of the tutorial I hope you found that interesting I hope you have a go at this in the next tutorial I'll look at actually using a photo texture and we'll see how it looks